Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another episode of Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today we're going to take a look at TMG's newest game, Thieves Market. So this is a three to five player game that takes roughly a half an hour to an hour to play. It is a competitive game where all the players are working against each other to try to find the one player with the most victory points at the end of the game. And you will do this in the game by having one, the first player roll all the dice and then he will start by taking a certain number of those dice or and or the first player marker. From there, it'll move around the table with each player either taking from the pool in the center or by stealing all of the objects that another player has, which would be his dice and potentially the first player marker. Once all the dice are gone from the center, then you would go into the buying phase where each player is allowed to purchase a card from the market, and this will continue until all three decks of the market card are gone. At that point, the players will total up the number of victory points that each of them has, and the one that has the most will be the overall winner and the most notorious thief among the players. So, my opinion of this game so far is um, it is pretty good. I enjoyed it. I like these little box games that uh, TMG puts out. Uh, each one of them does bring unique things to the, the table. Uh, the interesting thing with this one is the balance of trying to figure out your other players and how many... Um, things you can grab from that center before players start taking notice and go after you. So it's a fine balance and then determining from that pile that you're pulling from that center which dice to pull as with, as you will be able to pick and see which cards are out on the table to purchase in your next turn. So you're trying to gather the right dice for the cards you want but not being too obvious because other players will take note and start going after some of the cards that you want if they feel like you're doing really well. So I do like those those aspects of the game. As far as the downside to it, um, I haven't really found too many yet. Uh, the only thing I kind of noticed is the way that the uh, cards are set up, at least the bottom notations of them, what each card does. Uh, it seems like a lot of them you need to reference uh, the instruction book, which has a full guide on the back, which is really nice. I really liked that, that there's an easy reference to it, as well as on the back of the player car, the uh, player dashboards. There's also a reference to that, but in order to check that, then you would have to reveal the number of uh, notorious uh, tokens that you have already. So other than that, uh, I would definitely give the game a thumbs up and uh, recommend for you for people to check out if those are the type of things that you might be interested. So let's head to the table and I'll teach you guys how to play. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the dice now. So on the dice, there's going to be six different sides. We have the four gems, which are white, green, red, and blue. And then we have two other symbols, the yellow bag, which will be turned in at the end of the round for gold coins, one coin for each gold bag, and the purple mask, which is the infinity symbol, which you'll turn in at the end of the round as well for one infinity token. With the market cards, they're going to be broken into three different decks, deck A, B, and C, and each deck is going to be comprised of unique market cards that players will try to purchase during their turns. So with these, in the top corner of each card is going to be a symbol, some of those symbols will have relevance at the end of the game or based on the cards that they have. So for example, with this one, the tower, based on the number of towers you have, you will get additional points at the end of the game. And other symbols at this point are just there for placeholders and might be used further in other expansions if they come out. After that, then we have the name of the card at the top. And on the side of the card is the cost to purchase that card from the market. After that, then you have the ability of that card, which you can find a full list of the abilities on the back of the rule book. And on top of that, each card can be used one time, even the turn it's purchased. So for example, if we look at this card, this one, once per round, you may spend one green gem dice from your pile to gain one infinity token. And then the last thing on the card in the bottom corner is a quick reference to which deck that card is from. So for example, this one is from deck A. For game setup, it's real straightforward. Each player will get a quick reference card, and then it will actually take you through the steps of setup. So each player will receive one gold coin, which will stay out in front of the players. Everybody knows what each player has. From there, then you'll set up your loot dice based on the number of players. So we're going to go ahead and play with a three-player game. So we'll go ahead and grab ten dice. From there, then we're going to go ahead and set up our market cards. So we will shuffle each deck and then draw out a number of cards randomly based on the deck. 
So for deck A, it has 16 cards in it, and we only will play with 13 cards, which is listed there. So we're going to go ahead and remove three, and then we'll place deck A out on the board. With deck B, it is comprised of 19 cards, and we're only going to need 12, so we'll count out seven of those. And then the rest will go out on the field. And last, deck C, which is comprised of 14 cards, and again, we will only need 11, so we'll move three from that deck. From there, then we can go ahead and place our first cards out for the market A, and so you'll flip over the first five cards from that. From here, the last thing you'll need to do is choose the starting player, which you can do in any way you want. So we're going to go ahead and give it to uh, this player over here. You're also going to want to put out the gold coins in easy reach of all players, as well as the infinite tokens. And I like to separate those between the ones that are one points and the ones that are five points. Thieves Market is a game that's played over a number of rounds, with each round consisting of two phases, splitting the loot and making purchases, followed by an end of round step. We're going to go ahead and take a closer look at each one of these phases now. So the first phase in each round is splitting the loot. So the player with the mark, or first player token, will be the starting player, and he's going to go ahead and grab the loot dice and give them a roll into the center of the table. From there, then he will place his mark as one of the objects that players can claim. And then starting with him, he will go ahead and just choose which dice that he would like to claim or which objects he would like to claim as part of his loot. Now, you may want to pay attention to the market cards as these are the cards that you're going to be purchasing with the dice that you take from this phase during the second phase. The other thing you want to keep in mind is that you don't want to be too greedy because other players are going to have a choice of taking loot from the center or stealing all the loot that you have. So you don't want to take too much because the other players will simply just take it from you. So let's go ahead and take a white gem. Let's go ahead and take a yellow sack and a purple mask. And then he is going to go ahead and stop there. From there, then it'll go to the next player in clockwise order, and then that player will decide whether he wants to take any of the, the dice or objects that are in the center of the table, or steal all the dice from another player. If he does steal the dice from another player, or all the loot from another player, then he will take that loot and add it to his side, but he must return at least one item to the center of the table, whether it's a dice or another object. If he returns a dice to the center of the table, he must re-roll it into the center. So that player is going to go ahead and just take some more stuff from the center. So he's going to go ahead and take the two red, the purple mask, a green, and he's going to go ahead and play take the first player mark. From here, then it would move to the next player in clockwise order. Now that player, being the last player that does not have loot, has a choice. He can either steal loot from another player as normal, or if he takes loot from the center of the table, he must take all the rest of the loot in the center of the table and move it to his side, which would end the first phase. He does see that this player was really greedy though, so he is going to go ahead and take that player's pile. Now, as I've said before, he must return at least one thing to the center, so he's going to go ahead and return this green gem to the center, and he will re-roll it back into the center. From there, then it'll go back to the next player that doesn't have any gems, and that player is going to go ahead and decide to take the stuff that is in the center. So he will take all the remaining loot that's in the center of the table. We're ready to move into the phase two. Now we're ready to move into phase two, which is making purchases, which will allow each player to purchase one card and only one card during their turn. Now there are a couple exceptions to this based on the cards that you purchase in the market. Some of those cards will allow you to purchase additional cards during your turn. So for example, if we look at the guy in the trench coat, this card at the bottom says that you, if you, at the end of the splitting the loot phase, 
if you have any blue gems in your loot pile, you're allowed to purchase one additional card during the making purchases phase. Now this would include the phase that you purchase this card. So if a player purchased this this turn and they had any blue gems in their pile after purchasing this, then they would be able to purchase an additional card. So starting with the player that has a mark, that player can spend any loot that he has to purchase cards. Now he is also allowed to spend gold coins. One gold coin will change into any of the four gems that he needs to purchase a card or to help him purchase a card. So he has two red gems so he could purchase these two cards here as they both require red gems. So he's going to go ahead and purchase this one here. So he was going to spend the two red gems that he has and return them to the center of the table and he has purchased that card. Now the bottom of the card says that he, if he spends a red gem, he can change it to any one of the other gems. He has no additional red gems at this point, so his turn is over. So then we would move clockwise, starting with this player next. And all he has is a white gem, which would allow him to purchase this card, so he will do that. He has no additional white gems, so he cannot use that card's ability. And then moving to our last player, all that is left that he could purchase is the red gem card. So he will go ahead and do that. Any dice that are, are gems that are not used will be returned to the center. All right, so now that all players have finished their purchasing, we will move into the end of round step. So each player that has a gold bag will exchange their gold bag for one gold coin that they'll add to their pile. And then each player will also uh, trade in their purple masks for one infinity symbol as well, which the infinity symbols will be hidden from other players so they don't know how many you have, which you can keep underneath your reference card if you want or in your pocket or anywhere else. So each player has gotten one of those. Any other dice that players have will also be returned to the center of the table. And then the last thing the player the that the players will need to do is refill the market deck. So we will flip over new cards to fill out the rest of the A market back up to five cards. If at any point you don't have enough cards in the deck to refill market A, then you will start market B. Any cards that are market A will remain on top or remain out, and those cards can be purchased as well. So when you move into market B, you'll have additional cards out. When you can't fill market B anymore, then you would open in market C and put out five cards from that. And when you run out of market C, then the game will be over and you will total up the points from each player and determine the winner. So the last thing we're going to cover is scoring, which is, again, straightforward. Uh, each player will have on the reference card at the end of the game. So the first thing we would do is each player will count up the number of henchmen that they have in the top corner of their cards. The player that has the most will receive three infinity tokens or three infinity points. And the player that has the second most would receive one point. From there, then each player will total up the number of gold that they have. And again, the player that has the most will receive three points. There will not be any points awarded to the player that has the second most. Only the first will get the bonus points for gold. From there, then you would simply just add up your infinity tokens and any additional points you get from cards that you've purchased. From there, then the player that has the most points will be the overall winner.